So this lecture is part of an online mathematics course on group theory and will mostly be about automorphisms of cyclic groups. So in previous lectures, we've classified the groups of order up to about 12. So we, can, we will continue. So order 13 is not very interesting because 13 is prime. So the only group we get is Z over 13 Z. Order 14 is of the form two times a prime. So the only groups we get are the cyclic group of order 14 and the dihedral group of order 14. So the next interesting case is order 15, which is three times five. And we've obviously got the cyclic group of order 15. And the question is, are there any others? Well, what we're going to do is look at order groups of order P, Q, where P and Q are primes. We've already done the case when P is equal to Q. So we may as well assume P is less than Q. Um, and we notice that by the Seelov theorems, or for that matter, by Cauchy's theorem, G has subgroups of orders P and Q. So that helps us to get a start on the group. And the number of subgroups of order Q is 1 mod Q and divides PQ, which is the order of G. Well, if it divides PQ and is 1 mod Q, it must divide P. And as Q is less than P, the only possibility is 1. So there's only one subgroup of order Q. So the subgroup of order Q is normal. So G has a subgroup of order Q that's normal and a subgroup of order P. And it's fairly easy to see from this that G is a semi-direct product of the normal subgroup of order Q by the subgroup of order P. I haven't got my P and Q the right way around. It's easy to get them muddled up. And a semi-direct product of two groups is determined by the groups and how the, 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 this group acts on that group. So we can ask, how can Z over PZ act on Z over QZ? And if we can figure this out, we will, we will be able to find all groups of order P times Q. Well, an action of Z over PZ on the group Z over QZ is just a homomorphism from this group to the group of automorphisms of this group. So we can ask, what are the automorphisms of Z modulo QZ? So this is a cyclic group. Um, more generally, we can ask, what are the automorphisms of Z modulo NZ for any positive integer N where N isn't necessarily prime? Well, this is quite easy to work out because all we have to do, um, the, the, the automorphisms well, the, the homomorphisms give, are given by mapping 1 to any element G in Z modulo NZ. Because if we pick any element G, then there's a homomorphism mapping 1 to it and mapping, mapping any element N to N times G. Um, these are homomorphisms. So these homomorphisms are automorphisms if G has an inverse this just means G is invertible in Z modulo NZ times where this is the multiplicative group of um, ele elements co prime to to n which which is just the units 
in the ring z modulo nz in fact the homomorphisms of an abelian group to itself always form a ring um, where the multiplication is composition and addition is addition of homomorphisms and the ring happens to be z modulo nz so we want the units in this ring um and let's start off by looking at the first few cases just to see what's going on so let's take n equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and just work out what the group Z modulo NZ star is. Well, here it just has one element. Um, one, it's not terribly interesting. Mod two, we can it, again only has one element. One. Um, mod three, there are two elements, one and two. And we now see it's cyclic with this as a generator. Remember, this group is written multiplicatively, not additively. Four, it has two elements. And again, there's a generator three. Three has, has order two. Five, there are four elements. And this time, there are two generators, because we can either take two or three as generators. The element four has um, order two, so it's not a generator. For six, there are only two elements. And again, we find five as a generator. Um, for seven, we get elements one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, now we want to find a generator. Let's try two. Well, two squared is four and two cubed is eight, which is one. So two isn't a generator, it only has order three. Um, but three is a generator because you know you take three, three squared is nine, which is two, three cubed gives us six, three to the power of four gives us four, three to the power of five gives us um, five. And so all these elements are powers of three. So three is a generator. In fact, five is also a generator. So we figured out what the structure of this group is. Here it's C modulo 1z, z modulo 2z, z modulo 2z, z modulo 4z, z modulo 2z, z modulo 6z. So it seems as if this group is always cyclic. Oh, let's try this for 8, 1, 3, 5, 7. And now this group is not cyclic because any of these elements square to 1 modulo 8. So, so this group is not cyclic. So that rather ruins our nice hypothesis. Nine is again cyclic. Um, so its elements are um, these six elements that are co-prime to nine. Um, and you can check for yourself that it's cyclic. 10, um, the numbers co-prime to 10 are one, three, seven, and nine. And again, this is now cyclic. So here are two generators. And 11, we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And this is cyclic, although it's getting to be a little bit tedious to check this. Um, in fact, the element 2 is a generator. Um, you, th this group is order um, 10. So any element is order 1, 2, 5, or 7. And you can easily check the element two doesn't have ordered two or five so it must have ordered ten there are also some other generators which i'm feeling too lazy to write out 12 we get one five seven and eleven and this is not cyclic all these elements of order two so the structure of this group seems to be a little bit complicated sometimes it's cyclic and sometimes it's not cyclic and we're now going to investigate um, when it's cyclic um, and the main result that we want to do to uh, discuss today is that if n is prime, then z over nz star is cyclic, and it is order n minus 1. Um, when n is composite, we've seen that sometimes it's cyclic and sometimes it isn't. And the, the exact 
uh, cases when this arises will be uh, we'll, we'll see at the end of the lecture and when n is prime let's write it as p so that i remember it's prime and we're looking at the look, look at the ring z modulo p z well this is a field that means um it's a ring under addition and multiplication mod p and every non-zero element has an inverse as you recall from some undergraduate algebra course, or maybe not. Um, well, in a field, um, any polynomial of degree p, such as x to the p equals 1, has at most p roots. So z over nz, sorry, z, z over pz star has at most um, so I've got this modeled up. Um, it should be an n. X to the n equals one has at most n roots. So it has at most n um, elements with x to the n equals one. And now we're going to point out that z over pz star has at most phi of n elements of order uh, exactly n. So what's this number here? Well, this is Euler's uh, phi function, which is just the order of z over nz star. So it's the number of integers less than n, which um, have, which are co-prime to n. So um, if we go back to the previous sheet, I can write down the values of phi of n. It's just the number of elements in this group here. So it looks like 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, 2, 6, 4, 6, 4, 10, 4. So you see it jumps around quite a bit, but it's not very difficult to work out. Um, so, we found a group that has at most phi n elements of order n. Now we want to use another property of phi of n, which says that sum over all numbers d divides n of phi of d is equal to n. So this means sum over d dividing n. Um, and um, um, let's illustrate this by looking at the case n equals 12. So let's write out the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So these are the elements of z modulo 12z. And what I want to do is to figure out what is the order of each element. So this is going to be the order of each element. So this element is order one. And the element of order two, there's only six, because two times six is zero. Elements of order three are four and eight. Elements of order four are three and nine. There are no elements of order five. Elements of order six are two and ten. And elements of order twelve are one, five, seven and eleven so there i've written the order of each element here and now you see the number of elements of order two is phi of two and the number of elements of order three is phi of three the number of elements of order four is phi of four the number of elements of order six is phi of six and the number of elements of order 12 is phi of 12 and i guess there's phi 1 element of order 1. And the reason for this is, well, let's look at the case um, of elements of order um, um, elements, yeah, so elements of order 4. Um, so the elements of order 4 are 3 and 9. And if you look at 0, 3, 
six and nine. The, these are the elements of the ring Z modulo four Z times all multiplied by three. And you can see the elements of order four in Z modulo 12 Z are just the elements of order one, sorry, the elements of order four in Z modulo four Z all multiplied by three. So um, um, we, we, we're just taking zero, one, two, and three and multiplying these by three. And Z modulo four Z has five, five four elements of order four. So Z modulo 12 Z also has five four elements of order four. So we see that five of one plus five of two plus five of three plus five of four plus five of six plus five of 12 is equal to 12 because this is just the number of elements in the group Z modulo 12 Z. And we've got one element of order one, that number of elements of order two, that number of order three, four, six, and 12, and so on. So this formula for N equals 12 just follows by counting the number of elements of various orders. And now exactly the same argument works for any number other than 12. So we've sort of proved this by writing out the case N equals 12, and then hoping you can see that it works for all other n. Um, this was an old style of proof that you will sometimes see used in Euclid's elements. Euclid would write out the first two or three cases of something and just assume that everyone could see it applied in general. So let's get back to our group. We know that G, um, so, so, so that G, which is, is going to be a group Z modulo NZ star, is abelian and has at most phi of n elements of order n for any n divide any little n dividing big of n. Um, um, now we want to show that G is cyclic. Sorry, that, that, that's not an n, that should be a p because we're doing the case of n prime. Um, we want to show that any element that is any, any abelian group that has at most phi of n elements of order n must be cyclic. Um, well, G has um, um, for all n dividing the order of G, um, G has at most phi of n elements of order exactly n. Um, and we know that sum over n divides g of phi of n is equal to g. Well, this implies that g has exactly phi of n elements of order n, because if it had less than phi of n elements of order n for sum of n, then the total number of elements of G would have to be less than the order of G, which is a contradiction. So G has some elements of order equal to the order of G. In fact, it has phi of G of them. So G is cyclic. So, um, so there is, if, if P is a prime, we can find some number whose powers are all the non-zero integers modulo P. Um, so a, a generator of this cyclic um, group is called, sometimes called a primitive root um, for historical reasons in number theory that I must admit I'm not too well up on. Anyway, let's get back to our original problem of classifying groups of order P times Q. So we saw that G is a cyclic group of order P. Um, sorry, I've got my P's and Q's modeled up. Cyclic group of order Q, semi-direct product with a cyclic group of order P. And we wanted to find out all ways that Z modulo P could act on 
Z modulo QZ. So the group of automorphisms is Z modulo QZ star, and we've seen this as cyclic, so it's isomorphic to a cyclic group of order Q minus one. So we want to find maps from Z modulo PZ to Z modulo Q minus one Z star. So how many homomorphisms are there from this group, which is cyclic of order P to this group, which is cyclic of order Q minus one. So there are no homomorphisms other than zero, unless P divides Q minus one, because the, the order of any elements in this group must actually divide Q minus one. Um, if P does divide Q minus one, we get some homomorphisms, but they're all sort of equivalent under automorphisms of Z modulo PZ star, because we're just picking an element of order P in here, and um, all the elements of order P in this group um, are um, it, 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 equivalent under automorphisms of this group, because all the elements of order P in this group are equivalent. So we get a non-trivial semi-direct product um, Z modulo QZ, semi-direct product Z modulo PZ. And this is unique up to isomorphism. So to summarize, um, groups of order PQ with P less than Q, we get exactly one if P does not divide Q minus one, and exactly two if P divides Q minus one. So in the case of order 15, we see that three does not divide five minus one, so groups of order 15 is always cyclic. Notice that in the case P equals two, we get, we're looking at groups of order two Q and two divides Q minus one if Q is odd. So we get exactly one um, group of order two Q other than the cyclic one. And this is of course the dihedral group. Um, I'll just finish by uh, discussing the structure of the group Z modulo NZ star if N is not prime. Um, here, I'm not going to prove everything. I'm just going to sort of state the main points and uh, give the key steps of the proof. First of all, if N is equal to um, P1, the a1, p2 to the a2, and so on, then z over nz star is isomorphic to z over p1 to the a1 star times z over p2 to the a2 z star, and so on. So we may as well assume that n is a prime power. because we can, the, the general case is, is just a product of these groups. And then what we find is Z over P to the N Z star is cyclic of order V of P to the N, which is P to the N minus one times P minus one, unless, P equals two when Z over P to the NZ star is isomorphic to Z over two Z times 
um, z over two to the n minus two z. I'm sorry, it's isomorphic to this. So it's not quite cyclic. It's a cyclic group times a group of order two. And this group of order two is the group gen generated by plus or minus one. And we can take this to be the powers of the element five. Um, in the case of p to the n, this is isomorphic to a group z over p to the n minus one z times z over p minus one z. So in this case, it is cyclic. And this group here can be taken as generated by the element p plus one. Um, and this illustrates the fact that the prime p equals two generally causes more trouble than all the other primes put together. Things always go wrong for the prime p equals two. Um, so let me try and explain, um, give a rough idea of the reason why things go wrong for the prime two. Um, what you want to do is to show that the, the number one plus p has order p to the n minus one in z over p to the n z star. So let's see, is this true? And what you do is you want to show that one plus p to the p to the n minus two is not one in z over p to the n z star. And if you can show that, then it's not too difficult to show that it is order p to the n minus one. And um, from that, it's not difficult to show that this group here is cyclic. I, I'm going to omit the details of this. I'm just showing the, the point at which the, 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 the proof fails for p equals two. And what you do is you expand one plus p, the power of p to the um, n minus two by the binomial theorem. So it's one plus p to the n minus two times p plus p to the n minus two, two p squared plus p to the n minus two, choose three p cubed and so on. And now this bit here is p to the n minus one. And this bit here is usually divisible by p to the n. And this bit here is divisible by p to the n and so on. So this is one plus something divisible by p to the n plus something not divisible by p to the n. So this is not congruent to one mod p to the n. And so this element does not have order p to the n minus two. So you can show it as order p to the n minus one. Well, there's something that goes wrong here. I put usually divisible by p to the n. And the reason it's um, usually divisible by p to the n is this binomial coefficient is p to the n minus two times p to the n minus two minus one, all divided by two times p squared. And here we've got a p squared and a p to the n minus two. So that gives us p to the n unless p equals two. So there's this denominator in the binomial coefficient, which messes everything up. So, so the reason why um, z modulo p to the n z, z star is not cyclic for p equals two is the result of this apparently trivial technical problem that goes wrong when you work out this power here and try and show it's not congruent to one mod p. Something goes wrong with this binomial coefficient. Um, um, so let's just finish off with an example. Suppose I want to work out the structure of the group z modulo a million z star. So what's the structure of this group? Well, it splits a z over um, two to the six z star times z over five to the six z star by the Chinese remainder theorem. And we've worked out the structure of these groups. This is isomorphic to a group of order two generated by plus or minus one times a group of order 
um, two to the four. And this is a cyclic group of order five to the five times five minus one. So we get times Z over five to the five Z times Z over two squared Z. So here is um, this group written as a product of cyclic groups, optoisomorphism. And it's fairly obvious how to do other numbers. Okay, so next lecture, we will be discussing the structure of finite abelian groups.